10 critical facts about hypertension, understanding the silent killer. In our fast-paced world, we're conditioned to react to alarms, sirens, and pain, clear signals that something is wrong. But what if one of the most significant threats to your long-term health made almost no noise at all? This is the reality of hypertension, more commonly known as high blood pressure. It's a pervasive condition affecting billions worldwide, yet it often operates in the background of our lives, quietly inflicting damage without any obvious signs or symptoms. Because of this stealthy nature, it has earned the ominous nickname, the silent killer. Understanding hypertension isn't just for those who have been diagnosed, it's essential knowledge for anyone interested in preserving their health for the future. It's a condition woven into the fabric of modern life, influenced by our diets, our stress levels, and our daily habits. Getting to grips with what it is, what it does to your body, and how you can control it is one of the most powerful steps you can take toward a longer, healthier life. Let's demystify this common yet critical condition by exploring 10 essential facts you need to know. 1. It's called the silent killer for a very good reason. The most dangerous aspect of hypertension is its lack of early symptoms. Unlike a broken bone or a fever, high blood pressure doesn't typically make you feel sick. Millions of people are walking around with dangerously elevated blood pressure and have absolutely no idea. They feel perfectly fine. This absence of warning signs allows the condition to silently damage the body over years, even decades. By the time symptoms do appear, they are often the result of significant harm already done to major organs. These can manifest as a catastrophic event, like a heart attack, a stroke, kidney failure, or vision loss. This is why the term silent killer is so fitting. The danger isn't in a sudden, painful onset, but in the slow, relentless pressure exerted on your circulatory system. It's like a river constantly flowing with too much force, gradually eroding its banks. Over time, the banks, your artery walls, weaken and become damaged. The only way to know if you're at risk is to have your blood pressure measured regularly. Relying on how you feel is a gamble with your health, as hypertension offers no clues until it's potentially too late. 2. Understanding the two numbers is crucial. When you get your blood pressure checked, you're given two numbers, such as 120 over 80 millimetres of mercury. Understanding what these figures represent is the first step to taking control. Think of your circulatory system as a flexible garden hose and your heart as the tap. The top number is the systolic pressure. This measures the force of the blood against your artery walls when your heart beats or contracts, pushing blood out. It's the moment of maximum pressure, like when you turn the tap on full blast. The bottom number is the diastolic pressure. This measures the force of the blood against your artery walls in between heartbeats, when the heart is at rest and refilling with blood. It's the residual pressure in the system, the pressure remaining in the hose when the tap is off. Both numbers are important. For a long time, diastolic pressure was considered more significant. But now we know that for people over 50, elevated systolic pressure is an even greater predictor of risk for cardiovascular disease. High blood pressure is diagnosed when one or both of these numbers are consistently too high. 3. It's not just a number, it's a wrecking ball for your body. It can be easy to dismiss high blood pressure as just a couple of abstract numbers, but the physical reality of that sustained, excessive force is devastating to your body over time. The constant pounding damages the delicate inner lining of your arteries, making them less elastic and more prone to the buildup of fatty plaques, atherosclerosis. This narrowing and hardening of the arteries forces your heart to work much harder to pump blood throughout your body. This relentless strain leads to a cascade of potential complications. In the heart, it can cause the heart muscle to thicken and enlarge, leading to heart failure, and it dramatically increases the risk of a heart attack. 
In the brain, weakened blood vessels can burst, causing a hemorrhagic stroke, or narrowed arteries can lead to clots, causing an ischemic stroke. In the kidneys, the delicate filtering units are destroyed, leading to chronic kidney disease and eventual failure, requiring dialysis. In the eyes, blood vessels can be damaged, leading to vision loss, hypertensive retinopathy. This is why managing blood pressure is not just about lowering a number, it's about protecting your entire body. Four, a mix of genetics and lifestyle are usually to blame for over 90% of people with hypertension, there is no single identifiable cause. This is known as primary or essential hypertension. It's believed to develop gradually over many years as a result of a complex interplay between your genes and your environment. There are several risk factors, some you can't change and others you can. Non-modifiable risks include a family history of hypertension, being over the age of 65, and certain ethnicities. For instance, it is more common and often more severe in people of Black African or Caribbean descent. However, a huge number of risk factors are directly related to lifestyle and are therefore modifiable. These are the areas where you have the power to make a difference. The most significant lifestyle factors include being overweight or obese, not getting enough physical activity, eating a diet high in sodium, salt, and low in potassium, drinking too much alcohol, and smoking. For a small percentage of people, high blood pressure is caused by an underlying condition like kidney disease, thyroid problems, or sleep apnea. This is called secondary hypertension, and treating the root cause can often resolve the blood pressure issue. To one to all, five, lifestyle changes are the first and most powerful line of defense. While medication is a vital tool, the cornerstone of both preventing and treating hypertension is lifestyle modification. For many people with elevated or stage one hypertension, making consistent positive changes can be powerful enough to bring their numbers down to a healthy range without the need for pills. Even for those who do require medication, these changes are essential to help the medication work more effectively and to lower overall cardiovascular risk. The most impactful changes include adopting a heart-healthy diet, such as the DASH, Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, plan. This involves reducing sodium, red meat and sugary foods while increasing your intake of fruits, vegetables, whole grains and lean proteins. Regular physical activity, aiming for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise like brisk walking per week is incredibly effective. Maintaining a healthy weight is also critical. Even losing a small amount of weight can make a big difference. Finally, limiting alcohol consumption to recommended levels and quitting smoking, which damages artery walls, are two of the most beneficial steps you can take. 6. Salt, sodium, is a primary dietary culprit. The link between sodium intake and high blood pressure is one of the most well-established in nutritional science. While your body needs a small amount of sodium to function, most people in the modern world consume far too much. When you eat excess salt, your body holds onto extra water to dilute it. This increases the total volume of blood inside your blood vessels, and more volume in the same space means higher pressure. The challenge is that most of the salt we consume doesn't come from the salt shaker on the table. Around 75% of it is hidden in processed and packaged foods. Soups, cured meats, frozen dinners, pizza, and even bread and breakfast cereals can be loaded with sodium. Becoming a vigilant reader of nutrition labels is a crucial skill for managing blood pressure. Aiming for less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day is the ideal target recommended by many health organizations for those with hypertension. Reducing your sodium intake is one of the quickest and most effective dietary changes you can make to help lower your blood pressure. Tragus 7. Needing medication is a sign of smart management, not failure. For many individuals, lifestyle changes alone are not enough to bring their blood pressure down to a safe level. 
In these cases, medication is necessary to protect the body from the long-term dangers of hypertension. It's crucial to view this not as a personal failure, but as a proactive and intelligent step in managing a chronic health condition. Your doctor may prescribe medication if your blood pressure remains high despite lifestyle efforts, or if you are already at high risk for cardiovascular disease. There are many different classes of blood pressure medications, such as ACE inhibitors, ARBS, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and diuretics, and they work in different ways to lower blood pressure. Some help relax blood vessels, others slow the heartbeat, and some reduce the amount of fluid in the body. Often a combination of medications may be needed. It's vital to take your medication exactly as prescribed every day, even if you feel fine and your numbers start to improve. Remember, the medication is what's keeping it under control. It works best as a partner to, not a replacement for, a healthy lifestyle. 8. A single high reading does not equal a diagnosis. Having your blood pressure taken at the doctor's office can be a stressful experience, which can temporarily elevate your reading. This phenomenon is so common it has a name, white coat hypertension. A single high reading is a signal to investigate further, not an automatic diagnosis of a chronic condition. To get an accurate picture, your doctor will likely want to take several readings over a period of time. They may also ask you to monitor your blood pressure at home using an automated, validated machine. Home monitoring can provide a more realistic view of your blood pressure as you go about your daily life, away from the clinical setting. It helps to differentiate between true sustained hypertension and white coat effects. An accurate diagnosis is key to ensuring you get the right treatment, avoiding both the risks of untreated hypertension and the unnecessary medication of a missed diagnosis. 9. It's a lifelong condition requiring lifelong management. For the vast majority of people diagnosed with primary hypertension, there is no cure. It is a chronic, lifelong condition. This is a critical concept to grasp. Once you and your doctor have successfully lowered your blood pressure to a healthy range through lifestyle changes and or medication, the job isn't over. The management plan is what is keeping your blood pressure down. If you stop the habits or the medication that got you there, your blood pressure will almost certainly rise again. This means that managing hypertension is a marathon, not a sprint. It requires ongoing vigilance, regular monitoring, both at home and with your doctor, and a sustained commitment to your treatment plan. It's about permanently adopting a new, healthier way of living. While this may sound daunting, viewing it as a long-term investment in your own health, protecting your heart, brain and kidneys for years to come come can provide powerful motivation to stay the course. 10. Prevention is the best medicine and it starts now. While much of the focus is on treating existing hypertension, the ultimate goal should be preventing it from ever developing in the first place. The very same lifestyle strategies used to lower high blood pressure are the ones that can help you avoid it altogether. By adopting heart-healthy habits early in life, you can significantly reduce your risk of developing hypertension as you age. This means teaching children and young adults the importance of a balanced, low-sodium diet, encouraging regular physical activity, and educating them on the dangers of smoking and excessive alcohol consumption. It's never too early or too late to start thinking about blood pressure. The healthy choices you make in your 20s, 30s and 40s lay the groundwork for your cardiovascular health in your 60s, 70s and beyond. Proactively managing your lifestyle is the single most effective way to disarm the silent killer before it ever has a chance to take hold. Further reading and resources for accurate, in-depth information and support, these resources are excellent places to continue your learning. For medical advice, always consult your doctor or a qualified healthcare professional. NHS, National Health Service, UK High Blood Pressure, Hypertension Section. 
British Heart Foundation, High Blood Pressure Information Hub, American Heart Association, Understanding Blood Pressure Readings. The DASH Diet Action Plan, Proven to Lower Blood Pressure and Cholesterol Without Medication, by Marla Heller, MS, RD, 